Welcome back to Eastern Panhandle Talk with Mike Hornby. Rob Mario is um, busy. Still busy. Yeah. <laughs> Working for the school. Volunteering, let's just say. I am joined by my co host Two-star, Bill Stubblefield. Good morning, Mike. It's been enjoyable. It's been a good morning so far. It's moved really, really, really fast. And, of course, Maria Larson. Good Welcome. morning. I'm happy to be here. The You're doing star. a great job, by the way. Yeah, I, I'm trying. You yeah. know, I, it's one of the great things Great guests I, and good conversation. That's what else all we can ask for. And our next guest is the original dream killer of the house. Uh, my good friend, <laughs> one of the most uh, intimidating men you'll ever meet in your life. But he does it with a smile on his face. And he pats you on the back uh, and he makes you feel welcome. Please welcome the finance chair of the house, Vernon Chris. Vernon, can you hear us? Yes, Mike, I can hear you. Thank you. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, Mike. <laughs> Vern, uh, as we move into uh, maybe having a special session in August, can you give us some insight into what you think might, will hap might happen, might not happen? Do you think it will be on the call? Well, yeah, I, I don't know um, anything uh, up front, right. uh, I know that, that there have been conversations uh, between the, the governor's office and the legislature, uh, preliminary conversations. Uh, I know that uh, some of the leadership in the Senate have been out of town, and they were expected back uh, later this week. And so uh, I assume that some of the conversations will con start to continue next week. Uh, other than that, I, I really don't know. I know that uh, uh, the uh, interim schedule for August is, is out, uh, and uh, I don't see anything unusual uh, about right. the scheduling so that if, the, if we are going to have a special session to deal with any uh, thing that the governor wants to talk about, uh, we'll have to rearrange the schedule. So speak uh, about like right. how the, the sausage is made, Vern. <laughs> when something like this happens, are, are you involved as the finance chair, uh, the conversations behind the doors? Is the governor's office coming to you and going, hey, this is kind of what we're thinking? Or how does that well, work? Uh, yeah, th th with this governor, uh, as, as you know, I've been around a, quite a while with, with governors from Archmore and Gaston Caperton up through to Jim Justice. Um, this governor likes to have conversations uh, to uh, get a consensus of items that he would like to see on well, the special session. As you know, uh, we, we come to special sessions based upon what the governor decides to put on, quote unquote, the call. We can only take up those items that he puts on the call. So he's looking for consensus. If he's going to put something on that, uh, those items on the call, then he's looking for consensus that it's going to pass both the House and the Senate and be sent to him uh, for his, his consideration. Um, I don't know so far. Uh, there's been uh, talk about uh, several different items. I don't know that, that it's going to happen in August. Uh, and if it doesn't, that's fine. Right. Uh, we still, you know, he, his term in office doesn't uh, finish up until January 15th of next year. Uh, fortunately, uh, you all uh, entertained the legislature here last year at uh, Berkeley Springs. Uh, this September, you all are coming to Parkersburg to visit uh, a very historical area of our state. Uh, and we're It'll be the first time I'm in Parkersburg. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the weekend after Labor Day, uh, there is a, a various uh, history items here dealing with uh, Blunder Assets and with the formation of our state. Our first governor was from Parkersburg, Arthur Borman. The designer of the state seal, DeBar, is, was from Parkersburg. The state senator, or the United States senator that saved Andrew Johnson's presidency, uh, Van Winkle, was from Parkersburg. So there's a lot of historical factors here, and, and we're going to hopefully take allow the legislature to come and 
take advantage uh, of, of some of the things that we have in Parkersburg. But getting back to the 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 items that the governor may consider, uh, I think that we're, we're um, probably not going to see those things in August. And so maybe in, in the October interims or November or December, uh, we can take a look at them. And uh, we'll see what, what the disposition is going to be at that time. Bill? Yeah. Uh, good morning, Vernon. Uh, Bill Stubblefield. Uh, Mike gave you a very rousing welcome. Uh, behind the scenes, he he's just glowing with praise for what you've done. Uh, so he's uh, he's a great admirer of you. Uh, we in the Eastern Panhandle are not very familiar with you. It's my understanding one you're from Parkersburg. That's why you're uh, kind of building up Parkersburg, hosting the legislators. Second thing is, you, I think you've been very active in banking. Also, you own and operate some ships, do you not? No, uh, we're we're in the river transportation business. Yeah, ship boats is yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah I'm the Navy guy, so I said ships inadvertently. So boats, yeah, okay. <laughs> right. No, that's yeah. fine. My my son is in the shipping business. He he works for a company that ships materials from the United States to Europe. So he didn't fall far from the tree. But no, my family's for eighty five. Let's see, almost eighty five years, we've been in the in the river transportation business and servicing the barges. So all the, the barges that come down through Charleston, uh, I don't want to say all, but some of them. Uh, we, yeah, pr- most of our work is done on the Ohio River uh, uh, from, uh, from Weirton to Huntington. And have you ever driven said boats or ships? Burn? You mean uh, pilot? Have you, have, you, yeah. have you been a pilot? No, I'm not a registered pilot, okay. but I'm a half pilot. I'm, I am considered a steersman. That's what you do so you can uh, main to uh, advance to get a license. Gotcha. And it's a matter of, of time, time standing at the wheel <laughs> to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe Delegate Scott Heckert is a pilot from what I remember. Yes. Yeah. That's so, correct. So, so, Vern, tell our audience, because, uh, you know, we, we have people on and, and they really like to learn kind of the, the roles. Um, when session is starting the, the governor puts out a budget correct um and, That's correct. and it's it's your your head of finance it's the finances uh, committee's role to either approve uh well not approve but appropriate funds based on that budget can you explain how that works in the beginning for your committee yeah so what what in 1968 the the constitution was changed uh, by the people to, to what we call the Modern Budget Amendment. And what that does is two things. One, the governor uh, will tell the legislature uh, on the amount of revenues available for, for authorization of spending to run state government. So he comes out with the revenue estimates. Then he is, by obligation, uh, to submit a budget of his opinion on how to spend those dollars to both the House and the Senate. It is the job of this, the legislature, and, and frankly, the only job by Constitution that in that 60-day session, that's what we are supposed to do. Everything else that we do during that session is really just just uh, the gravy. But our, our basic job is to look at the budget and make our own decisions, own opinions towards uh, what, how we see the spending uh, based upon the historical information that we have on how these departments uh, are to be funded. And that's why we do the budget hearings for all the departments in the generally during the first half of the 60 day session. So as is. Mike, I know you, you, you've been involved, you've heard some of the budget hearings, but right. that's a process that we go through so that the public understands what these departments do and how much money is involved and how much and, and how we allocate those dollars. And then in certain instances, in several of the departments, those dollars are matched to bring down federal dollars. So when you look at the overall state revenues, for the state of West Virginia, you're looking at about $5 billion of state revenues of, of sales tax and income tax and severance tax and liquor tax and all those things that we 
combined to come up with state revenues. That $5 billion turns into $25 billion because we are able to draw down federal dollars through the highway department, through HHR, through various federal programs for culture and history and all the other things that allows us to run our state government at that level. And that's the process that we go through and, and we look historically at what we've done in the past. We look at certain areas where we have uh, ongoing programs that we need to make sure that we're getting our dollars worth and that we're not spending money foolishly. And we're still finding, obviously finding all those things out as we go through. And then at the end of the time period, if there are dollars left over, which are one-time dollars, then we look at doing infrastructure. Uh, it's been the policy of this legislature and the policy of the leadership in the House and the Senate that we continue to look at using these dollars. Not only do we want to give money back to the people in, in uh, personal income tax reduction, but we want to look at the, our infrastructure within our state. That's why we've spent almost $200 million in our state parks. That's why the, the operations at, over at Berkeley Springs that we visited uh, last year uh, had the, the remake. And we've done that throughout the state. Now, we've got some that we need to continue to do. We're also doing, uh, it's not glitter, but we, we have spent a tremendous amount of money in water and sewer projects throughout the state because here we are in the 24th year of the 21st century. And we have houses and homes in West Virginia that have no running water. And that's a crime. And we're going to continue to do put money towards water and sewer projects throughout the state. If we yep. are going to grow our state like you all have done it in the Eastern Panhandle, we have need the ability to have basic services, basic services throughout the entire state to, to grow our state. And one of those, obviously, water and sewer is a big par part of that project. Yeah. And also Internet. And, and we have spent a tremendous amount, plus the federal dollars, draw down on Internet, and we're trying to bring in, quote, unquote, the last mile of those dollars. So all these things factor in in that 60-day period to be able to put a budget together so that we can bring that to the, to the body on and last this past year it was very late on the last day but we did get it done in the 60 day period so vernon something you said a while ago gave me a real pause for thought you said if i heard you correctly five billion dollars of our budget comes from the state generated funds 25 billion dollars come or federal dollars that we draw down on. There is so much pressure, or at least so much noise, that we have to reduce the federal budget. And so, in very little of the federal budget are discretionary funds. So, if there is a major push to reduce the discretionary funds in the federal budget, that could have a draconian effect on the state budget. Is that correct? Not necessarily, because the dollars that we're talking about are, are not discretionary dollars. For instance, highway monies are based upon federal highway tax, and those those appropriations would, would continue. And obviously, as you know, when you talk about dollars for uh, chips and for uh, assistance, those dollars are not discretionary at the federal level. So those dollars would, would continue. When you, when you start, you know, in, in my understanding of the federal budget, when you start looking at actual dollars that are discretionary over and above the defense spending and, and some of these other items, it's a very small amount in the percentage-wise of the federal budget. 17%, I right believe, now. something like that, 17 18%. Yeah, it, yeah. so it's a, it's a yeah. small amount. It could affect us in, in some small, small portions, but I don't see that in the in the in the near future i don't see that happening Vern, is that normal that uh, are we one of the few states that have more federal dollars coming in than we actually make in revenue i'm i'm not i would say that that we are one of there's there's several that do but because of our because of the the 
type of state we are, right? Uh, that's why we were, you know, we're able to do the things that we do, and you know, we 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 do that because one, like for the highway department, one of the first things that we have had had over uh, addition, especially over the last. 30 some years that I've been in, involved, uh, I remember under uh, Arch Moore, uh, when uh, Commissioner Ritchie was the highway commissioner, he, he explained to me the, the first thing in your highway budget is uh, on the 1st of July, you buy all the salt that you need on day one of, the, of your fiscal year for winter. The next thing you do is match every federal dollar with your next dollar. And you maximize that because that's what we need since the highway system in our state is con totally controlled by the state outside of your cities and, and streets. And the reason we uh, did that was because it used to be controlled by the counties back in the day, correct, Vern? Yeah, it was it was during the depression that they they because of of, of economic conditions the state had to, uh, had to assume taking over the highway system and so we we continue to do that and so we mat, we try to maximize every dollar because not believe it or not not every road in West Virginia technically is the same you have some state funded roads you have some state federal highway roads then you have some federal highway roads and you same on bridges and same on on traffic control and that type of thing so there's a variety of different uh programs out there in the mixture of the dollars uh on a particular road so if they're paving over there in your area on a particular two-lane road versus one of the four-lane roads the two-lane road may be a totally state-funded road Whereas the four-lane road, like on Route 9 in your area, may be federally funded with a, a portion uh, of state matching dollars. Some of those matching dollars are 90% federal, 10% state. Some of them are 80-20. Some of them are 730. It just depends on the particular program that they're in. The same thing on bridges. Some of the bridges are, some of the small bridge operations could be 100% federal. Some of them are 90-10. Some of the larger bridges are generally 90-10 or 80-20. So it just depends on the mixture. And for such a small state, I think people need to realize we have probably more roads than most big states because just because of our geographic geographic uh, nature. Exactly. We, yeah. Just you know, last you know last year or this spring, you you took a tour down in the southern part of the state. And you you come to realize very quickly yeah. that you can't go east and west, yeah. but you've got to go north and south because you have to follow the terrain. Yeah, and and it it becomes very difficult in those situations. So, Maria? Mr. Chris, I have a really important question. So, will you do a field trip with the um, with the legislature to the North End Tavern by one of my favorite haunts in Parkersburg? We lived there for three years. Uh, not at the North End Tavern, <laughs> but um, anyway, just a, a eclectic kind of place and a lot of fun, and we enjoyed our time in Parkersburg, for sure. Well, I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> Joe Brodersheimer is a very good friend of mine. Uh, the North End Tavern, <laughs> uh, under its previous ownership, uh, when I was in high school under Doc Dawkins, was our favorite, one of our favorite haunts. It's a great we haunt. Were able to for sure, for be, sure. Yeah, because when when I gr was growing up, 18 years old was the ability to drink beer. Indeed. And, Whoop. yeah, and and Doc would allow us to come in there and drink. <laughs> and as long as we didn't cause any problems, he would enjoy, he enjoyed us being there. So, yeah, Joe and I, mm. uh, in fact, on Saturdays, uh, I'm normally there shortly after I leave work on at noon. 
and uh, I'm I'm having a, a a North End burger with a roast. Those are the best. I'm telling you, so, you know, they are really good. You so really Bill need Maria, to go there. This is this is funny. The first time, first couple of weeks, I was in the legislature. Vern invites me to dinner, and he says, "Meet me at the yacht club." And, and so I get all dressed up because I think we're going to a yacht club, fancy, fancy pants. schmancy. Mm-hmm. It's basically a, a, like a must like a North End. <laughs> it was Tavern. a little little mm-hmm. pub, and, and I I was shocked that you know I got invited out by the finance chair, and it was uh, to the yacht club, and they all laughed at me when I came through the door in my tie and my suit. There you go. There you go. So, but seriously. Um, Vernon, uh, talk a little bit. You have like probably 30 seconds or no, so. No, we got about three minutes. Okay. Um, obviously, the governor, um, Governor Justice, made a big splash when he announced additional, he was advocating for additional tax cuts. Um, what's your view on that? Um, 5%, what, what's your sense of that? Well, I think it, it, it's a doable thing. I'm not sure that we can do it all in one time. Uh, Additional tax cuts always have to be looked at as a fluid model. And what I mean by that is that you cannot take a picture uh, of it or a a still up model when you're looking at uh, taxes both coming in and going out. Um, We know that uh, all of the things that have happened economically in our state are on a roll. Uh, You all in your area with the Procter & Gamble and with the, the, the new steel rod plant and the other things that are happening in your area has lifted your economy over there tremendously. We are seeing that, for instance, in uh, on our side of the state, on in uh, along the Ohio River at Mason County, with the new core operations. That is totally under construction right now. There are several hundred people working in the construction field building that new steel plant. Uh, just north of there in Jackson County, uh, Berkshire Hathaway is is taking over the old Kaiser Aluminum site. And that construction project is happening. They are finishing up in Weirton at the Form Energy uh, battery plant. Uh, Cliff, uh, Cleveland Cliff just announced that they're converting the 10 plant and uh, converting it to electric, m- making electric transformers. For so all these things are in a fluid situation. There are going to be construction workers going back and forth and working on these facilities, and then the manufacturing starts. All this increases the ability to see the change in your in your economy, which will change your tax collections. So if I agree that as soon as we can, we need to lower our rates because if we're gonna be competitive with our neighboring states, for instance, I'm sitting here looking across the river at the state of Ohio. They are looking at, you know, if we if we finish up with a 5%, an additional 5%, I think the top rate will be about 4, a little over 4%. State of Ohio is already at 3 and a half or 3 and a quarter, and they're dropping to 3% next year. So Vern, I want to thank you so much. Uh, we're up against a hard break here, so okay. I hate to cut I'm you sorry. off, but I really appreciate your time today. Um, and I look forward to seeing you at Interims and in, in Parkersburg. Uh, thank All you right. for your time. Uh, we are right. listening to WRNR and TV 10. We will be 